Hi there, I'm Miss Deanne, back in my closet with another wardrobe planning session. This video, I am going to talk about what to wear for a ski trip. I recently went on a wonderful trip to Telluride, and uh, a few things have changed since the last time I went skiing, which is about seven years ago. Technology changes there quite a bit. So I'll talk about a couple of those things with your actual ski clothes and then also about the clothes that I wore around town during the day and at night when we were not skiing. So if you're getting ready to go on a spring ski trip, if you've got one coming up this year, definitely stick around and check this out. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. If you are interested in having ideas about what to wear for trips or just what to wear to work next week or for whatever activities you've got going on, think about subscribing. And if you get some good information out of this video, please give me a like. So I'm going to get into it right now. So let's get started with the actual ski clothes themselves. So first of all, two biggest items, ski jacket. I love my ski jacket. I got this, um, I think about eight years ago and it's very comfortable. This is the brand is Nils, N-I-L-S, which I don't really know a whole lot about ski brands, but I can tell you this one's great. It's got a great pocket right on the inside. Um, us ladies don't often have pockets on the inside of our jackets, but I find with skiing this was really convenient for being able to get to things quickly on the lift, etc. And then it also has the two nice deep pockets on the front. That was one thing that was nice about having a little bit longer ski jacket was um, I could have a little bit deeper pocket um, on the side going down and still kind of have a nice sleek look. So this one also has a, um, a nice little fur lined hood and you can take the fur off if you don't want it. But um, I find these are great for when you uh, take your helmet off if you like stop for lunch somewhere. It's kind of nice to have this especially if it's snowing just to keep that off of you. So that is my uh, jacket that I took with me. I also have an older jacket that I had gotten some years before that. This is a great jacket too. Um, let's see, one I L L, I guess is the brand. Um, this one is a little bit bulkier. I will tell you, both of them kept me very warm. This one has a little bit more in the way of gadgets. It also had like kind of an inside pocket, although it didn't have a zipper on it. And then also had a little um, little glasses or goggles uh, wipe attached to it, which I, I think is probably pretty handy. Um, and then you could also remove the lining from this one if you're spring skiing and you don't need quite as much protection. So that's nice. And then it does also have the inside pocket that does have the zipper. And then it also had outside pockets, but because it's a little bit shorter um, jacket, not quite as deep. Now, uh, this one, now let's see on this side, we had a little bit deeper one with a zipper one on top. You can start getting a little bit bulky if you put too much stuff in all these pockets, but there's definitely things I like to carry. Like, I did like to carry a pair of regular sunglasses for when we did stop for lunch on the mountain. Um, I did like to carry a um, just a very small wallet, and that's something that's good to have in one of these zippered pouches. Uh, definitely good to have a um, little ski cap that you can, again, I, I always ski with the ski helmet. I, I'm not even positive if that's required anymore or not, but I've taken enough falls and hit my head that I'm really glad that I have it on. It's also kind of nice for the warmth. Um, but again, if you stop for lunch on the mountain, it's nice to take that thing off and have just like a little bit of hat, little hat or something to put on your head. Your hair's all messed up and you might be still kind of cold. So I just carry these little thin knit hats and just put those in one of the pockets. Also, if you wear a um, an inner glove, so with my thick gloves, and I'll show these in a minute, um, I also like to wear like a little thin lined glove underneath. So again, these are great for the skiing, but then these are nice for when I stop off and if I'm gonna have like a cup of cider or something outside. Um, that way my hands are completely exposed, but I'm not in these 
big bulky gloves. So these are nice to be able to put in your pockets um, too. The big gloves usually have a place where you can clip and they can just kind of clip onto your jacket. So these were my ski pants. Now when I was younger, I the first couple times I skied, I actually used to wear the bib. So in full disclosure, I am by no means an expert or a longtime skier. The very first time I went skiing, I was 30 years old and it was just kind of one quick trip to uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which is not where you go when you're a beginner. So I didn't really get a lot done then. And then I didn't ski again until I was 40 years old. So since then, I've been about six times. Um, I'm a sort of a, a double green blue. Uh, the best I've ever done is a double blue skier. I don't really feel the need to get on blacks, although it'd be nice to eventually go down at least one just so I know I can do it. Uh, but anyway, so that's just to kind of give you an idea of where I am. Um, I really liked it when I switched from the bib to the ski pants. These are nice and warm. The brand is um, Marker. I got these, uh, it's probably been about eight or nine years ago. I'm sure there's probably some better technology now, although I can tell you these kept me pretty, um, plenty warm. I wore workout leggings under them and that was fine. They have these nice kind of wide legs which you can zip and unzip to help you get it over your big ski boot. And then that little second double layer lining just to keep the snow out. Since I do tend to fall now and then, that's very helpful. Um, and then they have both the front pockets, which are great. And then also these have one nice deep side pocket. This is where I was keeping my hat actually. Um, and then they also have these nice little side vents, which come in handy if it starts getting a little bit warmer and you just want to ventilate a little bit. So um, those were actually pretty convenient and I didn't even realize I had those until this trip. So anyway, just a nice basic black pair. If I skied all the time, I'd probably invest in some that were a little bit more fun. Also, these are great for the really cold weather skiing, the winter skiing. I think as you start getting more into the spring skiing, they might even be a little bit warm for that, but they were very comfortable. I've worn them a couple times for January, February skiing and perfect. So one of the things that um, I learned pretty quickly after I got ready to try on my boots the first day, I do not own my own boots, uh, was that sock technology has definitely changed. So these were the socks that I wore um, about seven years ago, the last time I skied, and they're actually nice and warm. I ended up wearing them around town, uh, but the guys that rented me my boots suggested that I switch to a much thinner sock for actually skiing. Now I assume I probably could have gotten a much better price on these had I gotten them advanced either online or in a store. Uh, so I will post a link um, to these. This is Smart Wool um, and uh, very nice and thin but also has like a little bit of compression around the foot. Um, I love this whole compression sock trend and so I will say I was very comfortable in these. Um, so I did, they're only $22, I did go on invest in changing out my socks. The other thing that was mentioned to me when I was getting foot fitted for my boot, I always wear just regular workout leggings under my ski pants as sort of an, instead of warm underwear and of course course one of the first things they told me was nope those are too tight and they come down too far they really want ones that come really just below your knee so that they don't go into the boot they don't want anything in the boot but the sock so for me I only ski once a year if that again it's been seven years since the last time I went skiing so for me it really wasn't worth it to invest in that pair of long underwear that kind of stops right below the knee um, so I just went on and stuck with my uh, my workout tights, my workout leggings, and these were fine. Uh, if you go a lot, I definitely would invest in the gear. If you're just going for your first time or you don't go that frequently, this really kind of worked just fine for me. The other thing that I've become a real believer in is these little, these little ski masks. I love these little ski masks. Not the most flattering look in the world, but you know what? They keep you warm. I like having that barrier between the mask and the helmet. I do rent my ski helmet. My boyfriend went ahead and bought his. He just likes to have it. 
I really don't want to mess with having to haul it up there and again I don't ski that often so I like kind of having that little barrier there it also does keep me really nice and warm it does come back down and around your neck so that's one of the reasons that I didn't really need that that gaiter so much when I have this the other thing that's nice is is that you can pull it up so that it does cover your mouth when you're on the ski lift and it's really cold or if you're just going down and it's really windy and cold. So I really like this thing, it works very well for me. Okay, one thing to keep in mind when you're wearing a helmet, when you're wearing these, is, is that you're not gonna want your hair up in a ponytail, um, but you do want it out of your face. I found I was really struggling with trying to keep, keep my hair out of my face when I was you know, taking this thing up and down. What worked well for me in terms of my hair um, was just to do like a little partial French braid, just kind of starting like at the middle um, or kind of lower middle. If you get too high, you're gonna have this knot right in your helmet, uh, but just kind of starting where it was high enough to sort of capture some of those strands and then uh, just kind of take it down almost to the end. So if you have longer hair, that's something you wanna keep in mind. It's gonna get messy. You notice I didn't do a fabulous job with this. I didn't on the trip either because it's still gonna get messy, but at least it's just something to kind of help you out a little bit. And again, that's why you have your hat so that you can just kind of pop that up on over your hair if it gets too messy. So I actually brought two of these. I wasn't sure if where we were staying, I didn't think I was gonna have access to a washing machine. We actually ended up getting an upgrade because we booked through Amex, highly recommend that. So we had a little washer dryer right there in our room and I was able to um, wash my equipment between the, the two days we skied. I also only skied for two days, so that was helpful. But definitely keep that washer dryer thing in mind if you're looking at VRBO or renting or something, that is really handy to have. The other thing that I went on and, and took was I did have a pair of my own goggles. Um, so that was nice to have. Uh, that's one of those things that it's kind of nice if you can go to a sun and ski or to a sports store that's near you and have somebody that knows what they're doing kind of help you fit them. I don't know if mine are the best fit and honestly I do think this foam starts getting old. Again mine are like eight or nine years old so probably if I go again soon I'll invest in a new pair of goggles. Um, as I mentioned before I like just having these little hats to, to put on and keep in your pocket and put on when you're having lunch in between, you know, if you're having lunch on the mountain in between skiing in the morning and the afternoon. Um, I carried a couple of pair of these little thin liners and you can pop these in the washing machine. So as it turned out, I probably really, really only needed one. Um, and then my ski gloves. Now I am trying to decide if these actually were my ski gloves seven years ago or if these belong to my older son. Um, I've got relatively small to medium sized bones, but I have large hands. So these were, especially with a little liner underneath, um, these were eh, maybe like a little bit tight. So uh, that's the kind of thing that you wanna pay attention to with ski clothes is going a little bit bigger. It's always a little bit better, but not too crazy big. Um, I went on and brought this gator, although because the little headpiece came down far enough over my neck, I didn't really end up needing it. So that might be something that you want to check out before you go and, and see. It is nice to have something to keep your neck warm, but this kind of did it for me. Okay, so for the tops, under my, the first day under my uh, ski jacket, I wore this little um, workout top, which is just fitted nice and tight. This is Athleta. I love Athleta for my workout clothes. It actually matched the tights that I showed earlier. Um, and then over that, I wore this kind of nice thick jumper that I got when I was in Deer Valley many years ago. Um, I love this thing. I've run in this a lot. Uh, to be honest with you, I was actually a little too warm. So we had great weather. We were very, very lucky. It was really cold. It was in the, the 20s and the teens, but it was sunny and it was not snowing on us. So for that weather, this actually with my jacket ended up being a little too much. Um, I think I probably could have just done with it, this and just done this and been fine. So what I did for day two was I went with this just 
sleeveless athleta workout top on the very bottom layer and then this athleta top that i've had for years it's it's nice it's got like kind of a nice little warm feel on the inside um but it's not as thick as like an actual jumper um, I love, one of the things I love about the Athleta tops is when they have, this one um, can just pull into like a mid, it's a little bit older. Some of them, like this other one that I showed you, have an actual thumb hole where you can pull it down all over your, um, on your hand. And that, with this and that, uh, that was fine. I felt perfectly warm with just this one layer kind of covering my torso, this co layer covering full length, and then the jacket. What I find with you go to short sleeves is, instead of the sleeveless is, is that they sort of start in interfering under the long sleeves. So, and, and really just carrying, covering your trunk does a lot to keep you warm. So I found that worked just perfect.